From Gutierrez, we travel about 100 miles to Tvilbuli, an important industrial town of Georgia. Although many commodities are produced here, coal mining and the quarrying of limestone form the most important. These mountains have always held huge deposits of valuable coal, but until this new plan was put into effect, and American engineers brought here by the Soviet government, very inefficient methods were used and very little coal produced. Now they follow rich coal veins deep into the mountain's depths. There is a veritable network of tracks that have been laid just to transport the coal from the deep mines to the modern crushers, washers, and sorters. When you consider the vast increase in production of these methods over the old, it is easy to realize what an improvement has been made. Workers used to hack at the mountainsides with picks and shovels, using manpower instead of machinery. In the place of powered equipment, they use the mountain streams to turn the wheels and to carry, screen, and wash the coal. What a change in scenery there is as we leave the jagged mountain peaks that hold only a life of toil for their people and the lovely corner of the coastline of the Black Sea where we now travel. Gagri in the lowlands is coastly embraced by the mountains and sheltered by them. Only the south and southwest winds can reach this rolling country, giving it the warmest climate on the whole sea coast. When we see on every hand such beautiful landscape pictures dotted with poplars and pines and palms and with huge, knotty, twisted trees almost as old as the mountains themselves, it is easy to believe in the old legend that the natives love to tell, the legend that places the Garden of Eden not in the valley of Mesopotamia, but here, here in the Caucasus, on the shores of the Black Sea. On our way to Batum, as we pass through Sufum, where there are many sanatoriums and health resorts and government reserves. You see, throughout all its changes, Russia has held to a constant study in the matter of scientific experimentation. The climate of this section is so suitable for research that here we find a magnificent botanical garden where study puts agriculture on a scientific basis. And for 25 years, they have been experimenting in the cross-breeding of animals. The results of these experiments with monkeys, baboons, gorillas, and apes have been so successful in creating not only better breeds of animals, but in aiding mankind in the medical field, that the government has seen fit to appropriate even more money for their continuation. Women workers find a welcome in a neighboring convent during their rest hours. Here in the almost subtropical climate and the abundant sunshine, the most fragrant of all tobacco growers. This is Turkish tobacco. The leaves are smaller than our American tobacco, and each leaf is hand-picked and then cured in the open sun. Over 90% of all tobaccos grown here are imported for use by American manufacturers. All around the Black Sea, agriculture flourishes, and all kinds of methods are used, some as old as they are. 
Goat raising on the slopes is one of their chief occupations. Grazing is plentiful and the, they're valuable for their milk and their hides and their meat. On this trip along the coast of the Black Sea, we were very fortunate. We are soon to come upon a scene that could happen only once in a lifetime. The Ajarian women of the Batum section are largely of Turkish descent and of the Mohammedan faith. And they have lived for centuries, cramped by old family traditions. While many have torn themselves loose, largely through the efforts of the Ajarian Women's Club, whose activities have been ceaseless, today we are to pass a celebration of the unveiling of many more women. A celebration to further the emancipation of heavily veiled but beautiful Ajarian girls. On our arrival, we find the great gathering thrillingly addressed by the Commissaire of the People's Council. Other leaders tell these girls that their custom is ancient, that it was conceived when man's fund of knowledge was limited. Now is the time to uncover the face, to lift those black heavy veils, to enjoy all the new culture and education that is the right of every citizen. Look at those beautiful faces. Here are the women of the East unveiled for years in darkness, now in light, out of ignorance and superstition and into the new spirit of freedom. After the unveiling, we lingered to watch the joyous festivities. This was a great day, a glorious day, feasting, singing and dancing. Although we have had a very full day, we still must visit Batum. For there we are to take boat across the Black Sea to the Crimean resorts. Batum is one of the greatest seaports of the Near East, and it is the cultural center of the Adja Republic. The city life has a European aspect, with its sidewalk cafes and its crowded business street and its busy stalls. From a modern hotel on the beach, we watch the activity. Swimming is a much loved sport of all these people. For Russians know the value of fresh air and sunshine. And here, as on the shores of the Volga, we find that they are a natural people. They are not here to show off a brand new colorful bathing suit that they don't even get wet. No, sir, but to benefit through the exercise and to enjoy to the full all the advantages that are theirs at vacation time. From this beach, as we look back toward the Caucasus, we can see an endless panorama. The sun, the sea, the exuberant plant life, and the mountains make an ever-changing, but an ever-beautiful picture resembling a vast natural garden. It is with memories of the eternal snow-capped mountains, the rolling plains, and the sheltered seashore that we leave the Adjar and board a coastwide steamer that is to bring us to our next Russian port, a Black Sea paradise, the Crimea.